which is uh, Li Tue Gai. Uh, so he is uh, the most ancient of the eight. Uh, you can see the picture here, which is really cool. Um, he is very, very ugly. He's the ugly beggar. He's got the dirty face, the unkempt beard. Uh, he uses a big iron crutch that you can see there in the corner. Um, he also has like the leaves around his waist, which is kind of a, a, a nod to the medicinal eff efficacy of his, of his character. Uh, he's ill-tempered and frustrating, which, which you can kind of see from his gaze. It's just like he looks like he'd get really pissed off pretty easily. The artist uh, rendition of this drawing is pretty cool. Um, so he's also known to be be benevolent to the poor, sick, and needy, and he holds a gourd bottle that has medicine for the sick. So it's kind of like a nod to alchemy and a nod to... Uh, using fluids and using potions to cure people uh within the legends in a large note he's in like so many this this is a character that's widely widely renowned throughout uh throughout taoism and uh and basically just uh i would assume chinese culture because uh we'll get to that in a minute but there's a fun fact about him that you'll really like uh well anyway he's in a large number of myths and legends he's known for being an ascetic who gave up eating and drinking for weeks at a time and was so in tune with nature that he was as if he was a corpse so you'll see this in a lot of uh let's say when you when you hear of like these monks that segment themselves away from reality and life and they talk about not needing food to survive anymore or being able to like segment off their body so they don't even have to worry about it anymore. Uh, this is a direct nod to, um, to Li Tiaguai. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Also, you know, the whole thing of like, there was a, there was a story recently about somebody who was apparently hundreds of years old because they just closed off their mind and body to the elements of the world. So that's another cool thing about it. Uh, it's another reoccurring theme within Taoism. Uh, in variations, uh, Lao Si uh, or the Queen Mother of the West hear about him and fly down to become his patron and mentor, which guide him to immortality, uh, which is interesting because the final lesson before he can explore the celestial realms is he has to separate his soul from his body to be able to rise above to explore the celestial realm. So this is kind of a interesting thing, kind of reminds me of the uh, nascent souls from the Xianxia novels. Uh, Fun fact, though, when you look at him in this picture, you see that he's like an unkempt beggar and he looks really ugly. Well, that's kind of a cool uh, result of his main legend, which is he was an originally a really good looking man. Uh, he when he learned from uh, Lao Si or the Queen Mother, whichever one you want to hear about, uh, that he was to explore the celestial lamb, leaving his mortal coil behind to take his soul out. He told an apprentice to watch his body for seven days to care for it uh, because he wouldn't be with it. And he said if he didn't return by the seventh day, he told his apprentice to cremate his body. Uh, the apprentice, unfortunately, had to leave on the evening of the sixth day uh, because his sick mother. Uh, due to thinking that uh, uh, Tiaguay was gone uh, because it was the evening of the sixth, uh, he decided to cremate his body, his body early because he had to go care for his mother. Uh, after Lee returned to find his body burned, he took the closest mortal body he could, which was that of an ugly beggar. So from an old, from like a very good looking uh, meditative Taoist to Lee, taking his soul out of his body and then coming back to learn that his actual body was burned, he takes the, the body of a beggar with, with, a ba with bad legs and all messed up like appendages and that's why he has that iron cane uh so this allowed him to realize the irrelevance of his mortal form uh because if he's just there to teach or be in life like what does it matter what he looks like uh lao si get, whichever tale the the one his mentor gifts him an unbreakable staff like an iron cane and a gourd full of an elixir that can cure all illnesses uh the first thing he did was go and cure the apprentice's mother who you know, the apprentice who burned his body. Uh, and that's kind of a show of forgiveness. Like it's not that he was, that because his mortal coil didn't matter, there was no harm, no foul in terms of him burning his body because it allowed him to transcend the thought of needing a mortal coil that was specific to himself. Uh, he's kind of like a Robin Hood type character of an immortal, not so much in stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, but more that he is a lot more uh, understanding and a lot more benevolent to the poor, the downtrodden, or the beggars, or the people who are handicapped, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, fun fact, 
Signs at traditional Chinese doctors usually have images of an iron crutch or a gourd, which is a direct reference to uh, Li Tiwagai. Uh, so that's that's really sick. He's he's basically the patron of social undesirables like homeless, cripples, and beggars. Uh, he's also a favorite among religious and spirit mediums because of the whole aspect of taking a soul outside of his body and achieving the out-of-body experience and transcendence. So that's... He, he's one of the most interesting that I've read about so far, though, so that's really great. Uh, in terms of the Xiaxia nods, uh, it's directly referencing taking your soul outside of your body. It's, it's such a common theme in these novels, so it's really cool to see where that, uh, where a lot of that can stem from. He's the most, the, he has, uh, it's like the most famous tale of an actual Dharma protector. Uh, you'll read about in a lot of Argun's novels or even uh, other novels where Anytime they're going through a tribulation, they have a Dharma protector, which is somebody related to watch over their mortal coil or somebody related to watch over them as they go through these tribulations. So this is like a, a famous tale of a Dharma protector uh, and a direct reference to out-of-body meditation watching over the mortal body. Uh, it has a huge play on the theme of the dirty beggar actually being a hidden expert, which is so common. So, 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 so common. So that's really cool. And... Um, it's, it plays out a lot in a lot of Chinese media. I'm not actually sure if he was the first one, but he's definitely one of the most renowned. Uh, medicinal gourds are really widely used in the, in the novels, and it is a huge reference to meditation and cultivation, staving off appetite and need for food. That's like one of the biggest themes within these novels is whenever they reach to a certain realm, they're like, yeah, we don't need food anymore. They just eat because they enjoy the feeling of it, uh, but it always mentions that, you know, immortals or people who are cultivating don't really need to consume food or water or anything at a certain point. They actually don't need to breathe oxygen, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of, kind of interesting. Um,